in the quiet backwaters of the turbulent stream that is our time, there are still to be found structures like the lakeside towers. The man who dreamed it into being and the architect who added a few nightmares of his own have long ago passed from the scene. But they built with love and they built for endurance. And if the people they attract provoke a smile, let it not be an unkind one because they represent an almost forgotten era and they may not be with us much longer. For instance, these are the maiden aunts you're supposed to take out to dinner when your own important business brings you briefly to their city. How will you invent excuses to give them over the telephone until you finally decide it's kinder not to call them at all? That way, they'll never know you were in town. Or perhaps you do take them out. How you smile and suffer during the ordeal. But what a glow of self-righteousness fills you when you finally put them into a cab and escape to the nearest bar. You really should take them out. It gives them something to talk about for weeks. And this? He is the young man of the group in all the faded photographs now gathering dust in the attic. No one remembers how he got there or who he was. He might be the one who introduced your father to your mother that day they played lawn tennis. Or perhaps he's the kid in the background of the picture taken when your grandfather was a colonel in the Philippines. If he was, he came back unhurt and married the girl who had waited for him. And this man? Forgotten too, perhaps. But in your grandmother's day, he was the one who gave such gay little suppers after the theater. There were corsages for each of the ladies, champagne, and how the debutantes whispered among themselves and longed for a glimpse of his wicked and forbidden world. Only a few of a rapidly diminishing band, still clinging to another day, its conventions, its serenity, when the future held nothing of fear. But wait, who is this? Someone's mother? Grandmother? Who is she? No one in the house knows except that she is Mrs. Freeman. Even old John, the head waiter, can't tell you. And when newcomers ask about her, he only says, why, she's Mrs. Freeman. Been here since before I came. Be here after I'm gone, I reckon. I remember Mr. Freeman, but he's been dead all 18 years. Too bad. They feel very happy and secure in this little world of theirs that's coming to an end. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Parsons, superintendent of buildings of the university. I just came in to check up on the situation. I suppose all the tenants are already gone or going. Well, Mrs. Freeman hasn't said anything about her plans. Mrs. Freeman? Who's she? Uh, she has the southeast corner on the fourth floor. Well, what does she say? I, I told you she hadn't said anything. I mean, when you asked her. But I didn't ask her. You didn't what? Well, <laughs> there's something about her. You just don't ask her questions. See if she's in. I'll go up and ask her. Oh, she doesn't see anyone mornings. Perhaps she'd see you this afternoon. Where's your house for? Right here. Connect me with Mrs. Freeman's apartment, please. Hello? Hello. I'm Mr. Parsons. I'd like to see you for a few minutes to find out your plans for moving. I shall be at home this afternoon from 3 to 5, if you care to call. Yes, but... Well, I'll drop in on her this afternoon. That's what I thought you'd do. <clears throat> Mr. Parsons? Yes. Come in, do. Put your hat there. Thank you. Sit there, near the ashtray and cigarettes. I hope you'll find your kind. 
Thank you. I'll only be here a minute. I explained this morning why I wished to see you. This morning? I think I only knew you did wish to see me. Well, you see, I'm in charge of building for the university. You know, we bought the towers for a dormitory. I believe someone did tell me so. Why, a notice was sent you some time ago. There. Was it printed? I never read circulars. We're taking over the 1st of June to begin alterations. The other tenants are all gone. I've noticed that. The dining room seems very empty. It used to be such a neighborly, friendly place. So you see, I need to know your plans. I mean, uh, when are you going to move out? Mercy, I'm not going to move out. This is my home. Well, I know you've lived here for a long time, but this building is going to be used for a dormitory, a boys' dormitory. They'll be moving in in September. This won't be an hotel, an apartment anymore. Well, I'm sure to miss my old friends, but the boys will be nice neighbors. I've always liked boys. Well, I'm afraid I... I mean, you see... Well, the thing is, you can't stay here. Nonsense, of course I can. I've already told you it's my home. Oh, I know, I know. It's where you've been living and all that, but it... I mean, this is an apartment and you're just a tenant. That is, it has been and you have been, but it won't be anymore. And all what I'm trying to say is, there won't be any tenants anymore. I quite understand. And don't be distressed and don't worry about me. I shall be perfectly comfortable. And now, let me make you a cup of tea. See here, Mrs. Freeman, I'm afraid you don't understand. We bought the towers. We don't want any tenants, so you'll have to move out. I'm afraid it's you who doesn't understand, Mr. Parsons. You may have bought the towers, but you haven't bought my home here because I own it and I haven't sold it. Oh, I see. You mean you own it, uh, just this one apartment? Yes. Well, that's different, isn't it? Entirely. But isn't that rather unusual? I mean, you owning just this one suite? Is it? I know nothing about such things. My husband always attended to matters of business. Well, how do you happen to own this apartment? Why? Because my husband bought it from Mr. Thistle 25, no, 26 years ago. Naturally, of course, he must have bought it. But why? There must be a very good reason. He bought it to humor me. He never denied me anything. Are you married, Mr. Parsons? Have you children? Yes, three. Boys? Two of them are boys. One's in his first year at the university, the other's two years younger. I'm going to tell you something. Will you please carry this tray? Only one or two people know what I'm about to tell you. I have a son. You have? Well, then perhaps... Oh, I mean, if I had known that, I wouldn't have bothered you today. I could have discussed the apartment situation with him. No, you couldn't have done that. Because, you see, I don't know where he is. His name is Danny. He left home when the university expelled him 27 years ago. Of course, Mr. Freeman and I always knew he would come back. But I was afraid if I ever moved from here, he wouldn't know where to find me. So I persuaded Mr. Freeman to buy our home here. I see. Mr. Thistle, who built the towers, was a dear friend, and he and Mr. Freeman arranged it between them. We were his first tenants. Danny was born here. We were great chums when he was a boy. And then he did so well at school, and even at the university. Of course, he was a scamp. <laughs> if he hadn't been, they never would have expelled him. But so often, boys do things out of high spirits rather than out of viciousness, don't you think? Why, of course. But his father was too angry to understand that. They quarreled rather bitterly. I never blamed my husband, but he did have a raging temper. That was why Danny went away. Why, you haven't touched your tea or your sandwich. Oh, I, I was too interested, I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'd never bore others with my affairs, but I wanted you to know if it wasn't for Danny, I'd be happy to oblige the university. I've never blamed them for expelling him. 
was stupid of them, but I think they just lost their tempers. But of course, you see now that I couldn't think of moving until Danny comes home. Don't ask me how I know he'll come home, nor judge him for not having sent me word all these years. I know Danny. And he'll explain everything when he gets here. Danny, what a mess. She has a deed? No, it's a lease. Terminable at her option or at her death. Recorded? Oh, yes, it's recorded all right. It seems uh, Mr. Freeman was a lawyer. He did it up nice and tight. Why didn't your conveyancer spot it? Carelessness, sheer carelessness. He checked up to the mortgage and let it go at that. I let him go. <laughs> I still think that if we fought, we could have her evicted. Can't stand the publicity. A big university picking on a poor little old woman sitting there waiting for her prodigal son to return. Newspapers would make a martyr of her overnight. Isn't a mother in the country who'd send her son to us? No. You know how we can get her out? Yes, but I'm not going to do it. It's your job. We spent too much money on that building to abandon it to a half-cracked old woman. She's a nuisance and has to be removed. And we hope you won't be inconvenienced too much, but during repairs, uh, that will be all summer. Things will be pretty uncomfortable here. Really? Why? Well, sawing and hammering all over the building, for one thing. Oh, I don't mind noises, at least after I'm awake for the day. Also, uh, we're going to take out the elevator. Use the shaft for a stairway. You know, I think that's sensible. Young men working hard at their books all day must often neglect to take a proper amount of exercise. Running up and down stairs will be good for them. Yes, but you. Oh, I shan't mind. But you'll have to go out for your meals. The dining room will be closed. And there isn't a decent place to eat within a mile of here. Then I shall have to eat at the indecent places. And, of course, I can manage ordinary things in the kitchen. Oh, you won't be able to cook. We'll have to disconnect the electricity and gas. Really? Then I shall have to get a little oil burner. The water will be turned off, too. Now, Mr. Parsons, I hope you're not being indirect with me, trying to force me out of here. I can see it's better to shut off the gas and electricity because of the danger of fire. But surely the workmen will need water to drink and to mix plaster. No. I think if you force me to do without water, I shall have to appeal to the health department. I'm sure they'd hold you accountable for any nuisance I might commit. Well, I'll see what I can do about the water. I'm sure you will. And now that we've nothing more to discuss in the way of business, I'll brew you some tea. Business, Tom. Mom, they couldn't drive me away from here if they put fire plugs every six feet up and down both sides of the street. Anytime yourself is inside a door anywhere, I'll be parked outside. Come on, open up, 
up in there. Good afternoon. What is this? This? Why, it's my home. Do come in, please. Frankie and Johnny were sweethearts. Shut up. He was her man. I what she done him wrong. Oh, Frankie and Johnny. Oh, oh you want to play, huh? Wait a minute. Wait a, listen. Listen. Wait a minute. I got something to tell you. There's a dame. A dame? A what? A dame. Well, who's is she? Where is she? Bring her in. But why? She'll hear you. Man, you're drunk. I'm not drunk. And I'm not kidding. Down the hall, there's a little old woman about 100 years old. She says she lives there. Guys, she says she lives there. Where are you going? How do you do? I'm Joe Downs. How do you do? Won't you come in? Thank you, ma'am. You sure she's old? You no, know, Joe oughtn't to go crashing in there like that. It's all right. He worked in the Chicago Standard this summer. Thinks he's a journalist or something. You'll get the dirt. Look, if there's any dirt connected with that old lady, I'll eat it on toast. Well, I hope she has a lot of lovely young girlfriends for us. Oh, oh but, but Pete, how... How am I going to take a shower if, if she's liable to come out in the hall any minute? Don't ask me, bub. Innocence is its own armor, William. Go as you are. If she attacks you, you can always scream. Oh, <laughs> cut that kind of talk. I'm telling you, she... Yes, Auntie. I've been yelling my head off all morning for a freshman and didn't get a nibble. Don't we get any service in this dormitory? They're all on the top floor, segregated like a quarantine or something. Yeah. It's the dean's idea, you know, solidarity of classes and all that. You want a bodyguard? No, I'll see how they handle it. Freshman? Hey, you, freshman, put that down. Come on, follow me. All right, you freshmen take those suitcases in there and unpack them. Yes, yes sir. sir. Come on, my friend. We are invited to tea. Tea? We're going to discuss the ways and means in which our neighbor can get in and out without causing embarrassment to our more fervent nature lovers. <laughs> and you know what? She knows that boys are the most modest animals on Earth, and we'd be miserable if we had to keep dodging her all the time. So we're going to discuss the matter over our teacups. <laughs> the whole thing sounds screwy to me. I don't get it. Neither do I. But I will. And then, my boy, you will see journalistic history in the making. <laughs> Come on, the gang's waiting. Wait a minute. Now, you freshmen keep busy or I'll be on your tails. What are your names? Where do you live? Dan Freeman. Bob Edgar. In the front corner on the floor above this. Okay. If you run out of me, I'll know where to find you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we go. Well, see here, fellas. We're not going to kid her. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Of course no. not, Paul. Good afternoon. How do you do, How are you? How are you? Come in. Do. Oh, after you, Mrs. Freeman. Please. Quite a place, huh? Aren't you going to invite those other two boys? Them? Oh, no. They're freshmen. They don't deserve a break like this. Oh, I see. <clears throat> Mrs. Freeman, may I present Ike Dale, Bill Hedge, Pete Myrick, Charlie Horn, How do you do? and Paul Parker. Mrs. Glad Freeman, you, Mrs. how are you? I shan't remember all your names at first, I'm afraid. But I'm happy you came to call. I'm at home Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, always. And there'll be tea if any of you wish to drop in on me. Sit down. Thank you. And now, cream or lemon, Mr. Downs? Cream, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
too bad. Mrs. Freeman, you sure that coat's going to be warm enough? It's turned cold, you know. Oh, I think so. Thank you, Paul. You all ready, Mrs. Freeman? Yes. Come on, let's go. Clear third, lady coming down. Three cleared, bring her on down. Clear two, lady coming down. Idea. Where oh, do we no, get to? No, let's there get it. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Danny. Danny, are you here? Danny. Danny, wake up. Where's Danny Freeman? Danny Freeman? Did you say Danny Freeman? Yes. Wait! Perhaps you have the wrong floor. Shut the window. Do. And we'll go into the other room where it's warmer. Mm -hmm. I think I can help you find the boy you want. I know who you are. You're Mrs. Freeman. Danny's told me about you. Danny's told you about me? Yes. About your living here. Are you all right? Oh, yes, my dear. Now tell me, who is this Danny Freeman? He's a freshman. Now let me think. I'm afraid I don't know him, but I know none of the freshmen. Where's his room? Well, it... it must be right above yours. Is this the fifth floor? The fourth. I knew it. I knew I'd lost count, but, well, you just have to excuse me. I guess I'm a little tight. I must be, or I wouldn't have been crazy enough to come here. But I have to find Danny. I'm sure I can help you. Do. Oh, you could be making yourself presentable. The bathroom is there, and you can use my dressing table. <laughs> Thanks. I must be a sight. Oh, Mrs. Freeman, you... you won't let anyone but Dan know I'm here, will you? Don't worry, dear. <laughs> Thank you. Bill. Bill. It's Mrs. Freeman. What's the matter? Are you all right? Bill, is there a freshman named Dan Freeman on the floor above? Yeah. Uh, rooms with Bob Edgar, right over you. Why? Has he caused you trouble? Look, if he has... Oh, no, no. But find him, will you, and bring him down. I must see him. Sure, I'll get him. Room. Will you wait, Bill? Will you wait until he comes in and bring him to me, please? Why, of course. But what is it, Mrs. Freeman? Why, you're trembling. Gosh, isn't there something I can do? No. Well, let's see. If you want him in a hurry, 
Why, he's probably at the Carson party at the Somerset. Maybe I could get him there. No, just wait for him until he comes in, and please don't ask any questions. Right. Silent as a grave. Oh, but see here, you've got to get back to bed. Don't you know no lady goes prowling around a man's dormitory at night and chasing freshmen at your age? Why, you ought to be ashamed, cradle snatcher. <laughs> you won't let me see them during the day, so I have to make friends with them on the sly. Do you want me to tuck you in? No, no, just wait. I'll get a book or something. Thank you. Didn't you find him? He hasn't come home yet. One of the boys thinks he might be at the Somerset. No, we were both there. And when we had our row, he walked out on me. I lost my temper, and now he... We were both half tight, but, but I was wrong. I made a fool of myself, and, and now so will he. That's why I came here. I wanted to tell him I didn't mean it before he did something terrible. I expect he won't do anything too terrible. Oh, you don't know him. He's such a crazy-headed kid. He does the wildest things. And it's all such a mess. Do you mind my talking about it? I'll go crazy if I don't. By all means, talk, my dear. Tell me anything you feel like telling me. Well, you'll probably think I'm crazy, but from the minute we met, we, we just clicked. Like, 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 like the snap on a gown. Danny says it was the same with him. I don't suppose you think it can happen to people like that. The first time I saw my husband, he was clear across a dance hall from me, standing in a doorway. Jenny Fry was with me, and I asked her who he was, and she told me. And I said, Jenny, that's the man I'm going to marry. Honest? Cross my heart. Did you ever quarrel with him? Constantly. But it was worth it. Making up was such fun. It's that way with us. We both have terrible tempers. We quarrel over every least thing. Only, usually, one of us begins to think it's funny and starts laughing, and, and that starts the other one laughing. We all went to dinner at Ike Dale's tonight. And Ike thought it would be smart to spike the champagne with brandy, and, and we didn't know he'd done it. And, well, it, it hit us. Danny stepped all over my slippers the first dance, and, and I was just tight enough to get mad, and, and that started things. He told me my feet were too big. I told him he didn't have to dance with me, and he said he could find all he wanted like me for a dime a dozen, and I told him he'd better go do it. Jane Pearson took me away to the dressing room and tried to shut me up, but when I came out, he, he was gone. And Bob says that Danny borrowed 20 cents and said he was going to go out and get a couple dozen just like me. Just walked out on the party. My dear, I don't think your Danny's going to do anything dreadful like that. But I think you're fine to want to apologize to him. Well, this never happened to me before. I never take more than two glasses of champagne. And I didn't tonight. Only this was Ike's idea of a joke. I know Mr. Dale, and I don't particularly like his brand of humor. But when Danny understands and learns that you risked a great deal to come here, I'm sure he'll be equally anxious to apologize. But now, my dear, I'm thinking of your family. It's nearly three o'clock. It is. Oh, gee, I'll get the devil for my father. He's terribly strict and old-fashioned. And I shouldn't have kept you up this way, honey. Oh, it's been such a help telling you, and... I know we're only kids, but we love each other. Honest, we do. I'm sure you do. And that's why I feel that Danny won't do anything that will really hurt you. Gee, you're sweet. May Danny bring me to call on you properly. If we make up? When you make up, do come, please. And now I'll walk downstairs with you. Oh, no, I I'd better go the way I came. But, my dear, if you're seen leaving here by the fire escape. No one saw me come up. My car's parked right under the drop-down ladder. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, my name's Lucia. Lucia Stanton. How do you do? <laughs> Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll telephone you tomorrow and let you know how it turns out.
Neil. Oh, oh my neck's broken. Oh, you poor boy. Let me rub some liniment on it. Oh, that'll work out. Where's that fresh one? He doesn't matter now, Bill. Go to bed, but bring him to see me in the morning if you can. Well, I'm glad to wait when he comes. No, no, dear. It doesn't matter now. Oh. It's an air pocket. I'll bring him to you first thing in the morning. Is that he? about me. We're flying blind, but I'm at the controls, and I'll set her down any minute now. <laughs> Check the instruments! Why, Danny, don't you feel fine? I feel finer than a frog's hair. Two frogs hair. Three frogs... All right, that's enough. I'll put him to bed, Mrs. Freeman. No, bring him to my apartment. Take him in there. I don't want to. I don't want to. Now you shut up and do as you're told. Now, Dan, breathe. Breathe as deeply as you can. Fill your lungs. That helps clear out the fumes. I don't want to breathe. I've been breathing all evening. Now breathe. Now what? Drink this. What is it? Never mind what it is. Drink it. You'd better take him upstairs now. He may be a little ill later. It had better be later. Say, how come you know so much about handling drunks? You can't live to be my age without having had to sober up some man once or twice. You're tops, really tops. Come on, freshman. Oh, uh, you still want to see him in the morning? Please, and bring him early. He'll be feeling repentant, I expect, and he may want to go to church with me. He'll want to go, all right. He'll be crazy to go. Good night. Good night. This is Dan Freeman, Tom. He's going to church with us. I hadn't met him until just now. Dan Freeman, Mum? Yes. Well, I guess we'd better get along. Freshman, did I kick you? What is your church at home, Danny? <laughs> Gospel. Gospel? I don't think I know of that denomination. Uh, I mean, Methodist. Uh, uh, Gospel Methodist. Uh, it's a special sort of church. Well, of course, I remember. I think I've heard they're a southern congregation. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Wake up, freshman. The lady's asking you where you live. Oh, uh, Chicago. So near. Then you'll be going home soon for the holidays? Oh, no, ma'am. My father and mother are in South America. I'm going to visit my roommate in New York. But your father's all right. Your mother, too. I mean, uh, it's nice to have a family intact, even though its members are temporarily separated. Are you an only child, Danny? Uh, no, ma'am. I have a younger brother. He's coming here next year. I have a sister in Denver. Just had a baby. A baby? What a large, what a... What a wonderfully large family. Oh.
the first place that ain't fitting, you should be sitting up here beside me. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee, Tom. And in the second place... In the first and second place, you are my oldest and dearest friend, and if I choose to sit beside you, I shall sit beside you. I don't know what to make of you lately, Mum. You... I'm happy. Happier than I've been in... Really happy in many a long year. The boys helped, living in the present and not the past. And now, now, I have a future. Stan Freeman. May I come in? Why, yes, of course. Why, you've been fighting. Oh, it's nothing. Lucia told me about last night, and I just want to say thanks a lot. You've seen her, then? You made up? Yes, and we both appreciate what you did for her. I was just preparing my supper. Have some with me, do. Oh, I've already eaten. I doubt if you've eaten enough. You seem to have had a busy day. Uh, rub some of this on your lip. It'll reduce the swelling. You know, this is what Mother used to do, only she used butter instead. Well, I have butter if you'd rather have it. I wish I had a piece of beefsteak for your eye. Do you think a lamb chop would do just as well? Say, what prize fighter did you ever handle? Did you and Lucia fight it out before you made up? Oh, you mean the battle scars? No, that was Ike Dale. Ike? Yes. After I saw Lucia, I came back and beat him up. Lucia's father likes Ike, but he doesn't know him. I got her tight last night. Me too, for that matter. But please, Mrs. Freeman, don't get the wrong idea about Lucia. She's not the sort of girl to come sneaking into boys' dormitories. I'm sure she isn't. She was worried about you. Yeah? Did she... did she say anything about me last night? I don't remember her talking about anything else. The first time I met her, she was at a dance with Ike. From the moment I saw her, I was sunk. I cut in on them the first dance. He didn't like it, but she did. We danced about six steps and then ducked out. It was moonlight night, remember? I wouldn't remember that particular night, would I? Of course not. But I'll never forget it. We walked. We'd never met each other before that night. It was just as if we'd known each other all our lives. Even before we spoke a word. Can you believe that? She told me the same thing. She was genuinely anxious about you. She, I was rotten. But I'll make it up to her some way. You most likely think I'm crazy when I tell you this, but... No, you won't either, because you're sort of crazy yourself. You wouldn't be living in a boy's dorm. I mean, you're crazy in the right sort of way. But, well, what I was going to say was that... That you and Lucia want to get married? Yes. I didn't see anything so very crazy about that. People who love each other usually want to get married. How old is she? Twenty. Twenty in July. I was twenty when I was married. But you're younger than that, aren't you? No, I'm twenty-one. Oh, I know that's rather old to be coming to college, but we always moved around a lot. And... Sets a fella back when he changes school like that. Why did you move around so much? Dad's a statistician. He studies wheat crops. Oh. Well, is he... Has he been successful? Well, he never tried to make much money, but... Yes, Dad's successful. All the men trust him. Grandfather always said he was surprised that Mother had sense enough to pick him. How old was your mother when she married? She only 19. They eloped. They're fine. Father won't go anywhere without her. He says he wouldn't trust her out of his sight. She's lovely, just like a girl. She's crazy about him, too. And they're as bad as Lucia and I. Why shouldn't you and Lucia get married? Oh, gosh, money. You see, Dad can't afford to give me any. And the little of the grandfather left would just about see me through college. Dad's very anxious for that, because he never went to college. Oh, I see. Wouldn't Lucia's father help? Oh, no. You don't know him. Lucia wouldn't admit it, though. She'd give up anything. She's that kind. 
But I don't know whether it's fair to let her do it. You see, I've never had a job, and I don't know whether I can support a family. Most men manage to somehow. Yes, I know, but... <laughs> you get an awful lot of problems when you grow up, don't you? You do. But they have a way of solving themselves sometimes. I don't. I'm scared to death of flunking out. Oh, no. Yes, I can't make the exams. I've been thinking of Lucia constantly. Besides, I've never been a very good student. But if I do flunk out, I could get a job and then marry Lucia. And I keep thinking of Dad. I hate to disappoint him. If you flunked out, would you be here in February when you're expecting your mother and father? Gosh, no. I don't know where I'd be. You're letting your tea get cold. <laughs> He's too good at running back to flunk out. Running back? He can kick and pass like nobody's business. The coach is counting on him plenty for next year. What do you suppose is wrong? Guy, she's smart enough. He's smarter than I am. Half the time, I can't even remember the signals. But Freeman, why, he didn't ball up a play all season on the freshman team. It's that girl. Who, Ikes? Ike says he's up at her place all the time or else taking her around. Well, by gosh, we'll put a stop to that. Anybody who can remember signals can pass exams if he wants to. Thanks for telling us, Mrs. Freeman. Wait, Bill. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a talk with him. If he's down on his daily marks, it's because he's loafing. Ha <laughs> ha. We'll put him to work. Well, I thought, uh, I thought that perhaps he might have trouble working in his room because of the other students walking in and out and disturbing him. I was going to suggest he study in my living room. There'd be no one to bother him there. Well, uh, the uh, fellas would think it kind of funny you taking him in. Oh, would they? Well, we could explain it somehow. <laughs> you know what we could do? We could say he's my grandson. After all, our names are the same. We could say that I really stayed on here at the Towers to help him, and now that he needs it, I'd taken him in hand. Couldn't we? He seems like such a nice boy. But after all, it's only an idea, and he may not want to do it. Want to do it? Well, he'll do it and like it if I say so. No more for me, thanks. Come and sit down and stop waiting on me. What are you working on today? Uh, lab experiments. But see here, now that I'm working day and night, don't you think I rate a night off occasionally? You do indeed. Good. We're dining out tonight. You and I? Yes. We might get big-hearted and ask Lucia to come along. No kidding. Lucia and I have the date. And we want you to come, too. I think you'd much rather be alone. No. You know more about Lucia and I than anyone else. And it's fun having someone who knows. You will come, won't you? Thank you. I think I will. Swell. This way, please. Madame? You wish to now, sir? Yes, please. But no champagne for us tonight. No. Still, this is sort of an occasion. Not on my account, please. Well, maybe if we had just one. Do you mind? Well, in that case, I should prefer for myself a thimble full of Madeira. Thank you, sir. Mr. Freeman used to let me have a little Madeira on occasion. The very name suits you. You look lovely, Mrs. Freeman. Tell her what I wanted to do when I saw you tonight. Now, Dan. Go on, tell her. Ditch me, I'll bet. Right. 
He's only fooling, making me feel good. I don't know. I don't trust him one bit. He's been a very good boy. I can vouch for that. I know he has. And you've been wonderful to him. I've been wanting awfully to see you and ask you something. Would you come with Danny to my house on Christmas Eve? We always give a party and... Well, I know you must have your own people, but... Well, I, I thought that... No, Lucia. I'm quite alone since the tower's changed. But your mother... Oh, she wants you. Only, well, would you mind pretending to be Danny's grandmother that night, too? Because, well, we do just like to keep it family and intimate friends. And, but with Danny's folks away in South America, he's entitled to have a family at Christmas. Don't you think? Besides, I only have one grandmother. So, you see, I really need another one. And you suit me fine. And this other grandmother isn't your father's mother? No, mother's. Oh. Very great honor. Well, I'll wait for the waltz. You and Lucia go ahead this time. You will come, though, won't you? Well, I'd like to, but so many strangers. Oh, nobody's a stranger at our Christmas Eve. Well, go on and dance. Uh, maybe I'll think it over, and then I'll feel better about it. I really am timid, you know. <laughs> you timid. <laughs> oh, I hope when I'm old, I'll be as lovely as she is. Hello, Lucia. Hello. You'll always be lovely. I wonder what I'll look like. When you're that old? Mm -hmm. You'll be just right. Of course, you may develop a bit of a pot. But then you'll be tall enough to handle it. You think so? Sure. The Madeira, madame? For me. And the cocktails are for my grandson and his fiancée. You know that. What are you doing, flirting with someone? You look positively wicked. I just told the waiter that the cocktails were for my grandson and his fiancé. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's our waltz. It's all yours, Mrs. Freeman. I don't want to embarrass you, Dan. I haven't danced in 20 years. Oh, now, don't you worry about that. the same rhythm as the waltzes I used to know. You're doing swell. When I was a girl, I could waltz the whole night through. <laughs> It's done. Who is she, Lucia? Who is she? It's his grandmother. Isn't she marvelous? Not too tired. Oh, I'm fine. 
And I'd like very much to pretend to be Dan's grandmother at your party. After that dance, it would take more than strangers to dismay me. <laughs> I'm so glad you could come. Although it's a madhouse at the moment, we're opening some of our presents with Dad officiating, and I don't know who's noisier, he or the children. Come on in. Mother, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Freeman, Danny's grandmother. Oh, I'm so glad to go. You know. Don't pay any attention to him, Mrs. Freeman. He's so excited over Christmas. Mary Ann Mabry. Well, speak up. You've had your eyes glued on it ever since you came here. Come on, it's yours. Aren't you going to say thank you? Thank you. <laughs> this is really from me, too, but we thought it best just to put Danny's name on it because, well, you know. Oh, thank you, my dear. costume jewelry all the time, but Danny got stubborn about this. He said he couldn't think of you wearing anything imitation, so so it's all real. <laughs> what there is of it. That's the finest compliment I ever received. Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you. Here, let me put it on. Awesome in the name of the law. <laughs> oh, now, Miss Mary, I think it's time the children went to bed. Good night, Roger. Good night, Grandpa. I don't think we've met. I'm Lucia's father. How do you do? I wouldn't have missed this for anything. <laughs> Good. I want at least six children, but Danny thinks we ought to start with just one. Still, it, it might be fun to have twins, one like Danny and one like me, or vice versa. How can twins be vice versa? I don't know. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, well, like, come on in. Merry Christmas, I. Merry Christmas. I know I wasn't invited to dinner, but my fond parents decided to step out without me after relegating me to errand boy. Well, you're always welcome here, Ike. You know that. Looks like you're just in time. Uh, come on, Ike, dear. Just put them under the tree. We'll open them tomorrow. Your mother's gifts always look so lovely. Did ours arrive? This afternoon. Oh. What is this lovely creature doing off the tree? Now, Ike, don't start that sort of thing. You know how Mr. Stanton is. He likes me. <laughs> how do you rate, Freeman? I haven't asked. Boy, do you bring light and sunshine into a room. Only to you, Pat, only to you. Merry Christmas, Miss Freeman. Same to you, Ike. Children going to eat now? Yes, Father. Mm. Well, here's to the next younger generation. May they have more sense of decency than the present crop. Well, here's looking at you. To all of us. Father. Neglected, Mrs. Freeman. Oh, I'm Lucia's sister, in case you haven't got us all straight yet. And I wanted to thank you for being so nice to Lucia that night. Oh, she told me about it. It was a silly thing to do, and she could have got herself into a nasty mess if she'd been caught. Father would have dashed over there with a shotgun in one hand and a minister in the other, looking for Dan or some boy under your bed. Of course, it was all Ike's fault. I find myself surprised at the family's cordiality toward him. <laughs> oh, that's because our parents and his have been friends for years. Lucia and Ike Dale grew up together. But she always detested him. Even his children, he was constantly getting her into scrapes. He was the kind who'd think up things to do, and silly little Lucia would trail along. Then Ike would tell on her, and Lucia would bear the brunt of it. Well, I'm still young enough to loathe tattletales. And I. Well, what are you two chatting about? The present generation. They want you to take a hand. <laughs> All right, Father. So, you didn't like my little toast? I'm afraid not. You see, I rather like young people. Oh, well, grandmothers are always over-tolerant. Your generation spoils the youngsters who my generation has to try to control. But Lucia understands there are certain things I will not tolerate. So she minds her P's and Q's. Mercy, you sound as if you'd throw her out in the snow or something. I never could understand why fathers used to discover their daughters... What's the word? Shame. During a snowstorm. You aren't by chance the man who wrote the old melodramas, are you? That was someone in your own generation. You're being false to your ideals. Oh, speaking of snow, it's snowing now. 
Uh, anything I can get you. Don't you want to join the card fiends? No, thank you. I'm quite comfortable here. Good. something for me. Yeah, I was going to get another drink. I'm dummy and have to get right back. What is it? I'm a little bit embarrassed, Ike. Yeah, what about? Well, you see, I got this lovely gift tonight, and although only Dan's name was on it, I found out since it was from Lucia, too. What's she doing giving you a present along with him? Well, that's a long story and a secret. But what's bothering me, I wasn't expecting anything of this sort, and I didn't bring Lucia anything. I haven't much with me, and I wouldn't outshine their gift. But this little ring isn't valuable, only in sentiment. Do you suppose I could pretend I'd had it in my purse all evening, and in the excitement I'd forgotten to give it to her? I'm fairly certain she hasn't noticed it on my hand tonight. Yes, I guess it'd be all right. Then will you see if you can find a box? There must be dozens of empty ones around, and I'll write a card. I haven't any Christmas cards, but I'll make one of my own do. all right? Perfect. Now you fix it for me while I see if I can get some suitable wrappings and ribbon. Just put the ring in the box and the card on top. Mrs. Freeman, what the devil does this mean? Oh, mercy, you shouldn't have read it. But you're Lucia's friend, and I know you won't say anything. It was really nothing. Nothing? You live in a man's dormitory, don't you? And if she came into your bedroom by mistake... I please lower your voice. It was in all innocence, I assure you. Innocence? Well, maybe her father will have something to say about that. How many times have you been there? I told you, Father, only that once. And then she didn't even get to see me, sir. Shut up, you young pup. How many times have you been there? Now, see here, Mr. Keep Sta still, Danny. This is between Father and me. He never has trusted me, and, and if he's never going to, it's time I knew it. Trust you? Have you ever earned my trust? Now, I can only try to save you. Ike is a gentleman. I know I can depend on him to keep still. In my day, gentlemen didn't read personal messages not intended for them. You practically shoved it right under my nose. I'll take you home, Mrs. Freeman, and come back. You won't come back to this house. I'll come back if I have to break in. You think I'm going to let Lucia face this alone? You don't need to go home with me, Danny. And I'm sorry I repaid your hospitality and sweetness with such... I brought you here, and I'm going to see you home safely. But I'll come back. Oh, boy, what a Christmas Eve. You know, I think I'll go along with you. You say your main concern is trying to save me. Well, it's too late, Father, darling. It's much, much, much too late. And you can make of that what you please. It's a good thing my loving family hasn't opened up their gifts from me yet. Robe for Mother, nighty for Ruth, slippers for Aunt Edith. Oh, to heck with the slippers. Lucia, what are you doing? Just getting the necessaries. You do want to marry me, don't you? Yes, but under the circumstances, well, I mean... Well, get along, Danny Freeman. Don't be a fool. Goodbye, Father, and dear old Ike. The next time you see me, I'll be an honest woman. Thank you all, and Merry Christmas. Well, you turned out to be, but this girl will have every man in the dormitory haywire. I don't care if she's married or not, they simply can't live here. He's my grandson, Mr. Parsons. Well, I know you told the boys that. 
But is he really? And his father, my Danny, will be here in February. Won't that be wonderful? Your grandson, really? But I haven't told him. And his father doesn't even know I'm here. He's coming to see Danny, and he'll find Danny living with me. Oh, Mr. Parsons, please let them stay. They'll only be here till mid-year. Besides, my Danny lives in Chicago, and I'll be going back home with him. If you'll let us stay till then, I'll promise to move out, give up the apartment, and you'll be rid of me. I'm not so sure I want to be rid of you. It's the girl and the whole crazy setup. You just don't do it in universities. Well, we've had it out with mother and father. They've announced it. So now everything is nice and conventional and regular. Dad's even boasting that he married off three daughters without the expense of big weddings. We all alone. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Parsons? Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Uh, Freeman? Uh, Mr. Freeman, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parsons was a trifle upset just now about your living here, Lucia. But I've explained the circumstances, so it's all arranged. It isn't arranged at all. Oh, I, I won't be any trouble, Mr. Parsons. Honest, I won't. But, well, Danny's got to go on with his studies, and, and he can work upstairs in his old room. Or if it's better down here, well, Mrs. Freeman and I can go to the movies. And, and sh she's going to teach me how to keep house. Oh, we're so terribly happy to be with her. Oh, here, darling. Thank you so much for letting us use yours. I almost hate to give it up. But Danny got me this one today. There's, there's only one diamond in it, but we're going to add one each year on our anniversary. And when I'm very, very old, I'll have a full diamond wedding ring. It's lovely, my dear. And that's a much better idea than getting all the diamonds at once. Well, I couldn't, you know. That's the right way to start in, Danny. Really, it is. Well, I... I'll speak to the dean. Oh, thank you. I was sure you would. And if he should prove a bit difficult, you could remind him again that I own this apartment. And I think it permissible to have whomever I choose as guests in my own home. And please give my warmest regards to your wife and apologies again for missing the Christmas dinner. But with these children getting married and the excitement and all, I wasn't equal to it. I'm sure she understood. She did. And I'll remember everything. But, uh, didn't you forget something? Well, what was that? This is the first time you've scuttled me without offering me a cup of tea. Oh, dear. Oh, I should have known. I should have expected to have it thrown in my face for the rest of my life. I made you marry me. I forced you into it. What about all the times that... Oh, hello, Mr. Gibbons. Morning. Mrs. Freeman's in the kitchen. What about all the times you asked me to marry you? All those moonlight nights and things and, and dances and... Oh! Good morning, Tom. Thanks. Have they made up yet? <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I don't like it, Mom. You've always lived so quiet, like. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. So are they, for that matter. Now, don't tell me that you and Mrs. Gibbons never quarreled. Sure did it take a saint to live with that woman and not quarrel. Well, isn't that funny? She's told me the same thing about you. Oh, she has, has she? Well, I've never raised a hand to her. And that's more than she can say. Every time that woman gets mad, the very devil himself seems to get into her fingers. She wants to slap and smash things and bang doors. Don't you dare break that vase. It's Mrs. Freeman's. If he loses this round, he's sunk. Life does follow a pattern, doesn't it? You know, I've never blamed Dan for anything he's done. But he did rob me of one thing. The pleasure of seeing him married. Of knowing his wife when she was a young bride. And they were adjusting themselves to all the problems that young people face and weather or fail at. No, I missed that. But they did weather them because they're happy and he's successful. And that's all that matters now. But now the time is getting so close, sometimes I feel I can't bear it. I stop wondering why he never came back. Because I know the moment I see him and he takes me in his arms, 
all the doubts, the long bewilderments, and the questions I've so wanted to ask will be forgotten. When is it he's coming, Mom? We don't know exactly, but they sailed from Brazil some time ago. And now I'd better go and see which of my young people slammed the door on the other. Lucia? Lucia? I'm not wallowing on the bed in tears, if that's what you expected. Why, of course not, my dear. But he has an unfair advantage. He can go stalking off to that old room of his where I can't chase him. Well, I think the advantage is all yours. He's got to come home to you. That's right, he does, doesn't he? Well, it's not going to do him any good this time. How did it all start, my dear? Oh, he... He... Do you know what? I don't even remember. Gosh, it, it must have been important. <laughs> Lucia? Lucia? Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Oh, so am I. Oh, we're dopes to fight like that. <laughs> Look, I just got this telegram. It's from the family. They docked last night. They're leaving New York tonight and arrive at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Eight? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow? In, in the morning? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Freeman, did you hear the family's coming tomorrow? Yes, I heard. I must tell Tom. We'll need more supplies. Uh, breakfast. They must breakfast here. Oh, but, Mrs. Freeman, I couldn't let you do a thing like that, really. I... Oh, no, no. They must. Tom. Tom, did you hear? They're coming tomorrow.
tried to wake her. Mrs. Fringer. Oh, go look at her, please. Danny's gone to meet his parents. Go look at her. <laughs> I sent for you, Mr. Parsons, because I thought you must know something about her. Whom to notify and that kind of thing. We've learned how very kind she's been to our dam. And we want to do everything possible. If she has no kin, we want to take care of everything. You do? Yes. Dan thinks she had no relatives. She enjoyed pretending to be his grandmother. I suppose that was because she was so alone. I believe she had a son someplace. If he can't be located, I'll feel it a privilege to do whatever is necessary. But I imagine her husband provided for this as well as everything else he did for her before he died. He seems to have been a fine man. You'll let us know, won't you, Mr. Parsons? She did so much for us. Oh, Dan. I'll take care of the arrangements. for you to go on back to your classes. Yes, sir. Well, Tom, you've taken care of her a long time. Yes, I have that. Mr. Freeman left me to watch out for her. I used to raise the two of them 25 years ago. She was a grand one, sir. She thought a lot of you. Too bad she couldn't have lived just a few hours more, long enough to see her son after she'd waited so long. Praise as be she didn't. Tis better as it is. But young Freeman's father was her son. The boy's really her grandson. She told me all about it. I thought you knew. Miss Freeman seems like a good man, too. Hard to understand how he could treat her as he did. Right now, he's denying kinship with her. I was so mad, I wanted to beat his face in. If you know that much, sir, you may as well know the rest to set your mind at peace about the workings of things that none of us can understand. Her own son's dead, long ago. Dead? That he is. And never a living man knows it but me. After he was expelled here, he got in with a wild crowd in New York. Kids with too much money and no brains, no responsibilities. Anyway, he kept right on like he'd been doing here. Drinking and gambling and hitting the night spots. And one night, in one of these gambling places, he got into an argument. He was shot. And the only decent thing he ever did for his mother was to give a false name at the time. Her son dead. Well, how do you know? Mr. Freeman told me so himself. Maybe there was a little good in the boy. A memory of the time when he was a lad and she was so crazy about him. Anyway, he sent for his father when he was dying. Mr. Freeman told me because he knew I loved her. He said I should always take care of her, but never let her know. 
and always keep her hoping that someday her son would come home, because knowing the boy was dead would take the breath of her own life out of her. And so, it's a game I've been playing these 20 years, abusing that young whelp of hers to her face so she could have the fun of standing up for him. <laughs> ah, but I was dreading this morning, sir, when she'd find out it wasn't him at all. She had the happy times, though, with thinking this boy was her grandson. So the business was well managed, as you can see. As far as she herself was concerned, well, her Danny did come home. Yes, he did. 